Hey, this is Dennis, and welcome to another episode of the Grounded Reason Podcast. Today we're going to talk about the media and how they have a misconception of the cord-cutting industry as a whole. Now, you can see this all the time. There's lots of misstatements and just misunderstandings about uh, cord-cutting and what it really is or means or how many people are actually even doing it. And namely, um, we're, we're really going to talk about this article that was written in the New York Post uh, uh, that essentially called HBO Now uh, a disappointment. And for those out there that may not know, HBO Now is a streaming service by HBO that's available to everyone, meaning that you can subscribe to HBO Now whether you have cable TV or not. It's how I watch Game of Thrones. It's how about a million people watch uh, HBO. And um, if you're curious about HBO Now, I've written about it on the blog. And um, this podcast is actually uh, kind of elaborating on a piece I written that'll come out along with the podcast that discusses this article in HBO and some of the stuff we talk about on the show. You'll also, there'll be a link in that article on HBO now and what that's all about if you're interested. And that article also fits with something else we'll talk about today, which is how many people are actually cutting the cord. And I know people distinguish between people who have gotten rid of cable and they call those cord cutters and people that have never had cable, they call them cord nevers. I, I think it's a, you know, a, while it might matter in some circles, really, it's people who find no value in the product of cable TV or consume their television content through alternative means besides, you know, paying pay TV a ridiculous sum of money uh, on a yearly basis so they can watch a handful of channels out of about 300, uh, you know, most of which they never watch. So if you're curious to know how many people are actually cutting the cord, this episode does reveal that. So let's find out and start the show music. So uh, today, I wanted to kind of talk, it's it's kind of actually poignant to the Times. Media writes an article uh, with really little understanding of the topic they're writing about. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, it's um in the, the other paper in New York, the New York Post. Um, right. Yeah, they uh, hit a headline that really hit the ire of the uh, Reddit <laughs> cord cutting community. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it actually gained a lot and of, you don't uh, want to make angst. those guys mad. No, you don't want to any subreddit. You don't want to poke that no, with a stick. That um, bear is cranky. So <laughs> it's it, the headline read eh, HBO now isn't as popular as expected. And if, if you read through the article, it's kind of, you know, and, and I'll put it in the show notes, but it's a, uh, they, they do one of those apples and oranges comparison when, they're basically saying that they only had uh, what are we in about twenty months now since yeah. they've been out, and they they're only slightly over a million yeah. subscribers. They only captured you know one fifteenth of the entire market, right? right. Like, well, and that, that's the thing is because they did say they said it's it's fifteen million uh, uh, potential. You know, they they say fifteen million that have cut the cord. Right. No one really knows that. No. And there's also some nuances about cord cutting that like not everyone who cut the co- cuts the cord has the, even the capability to yeah. sh- to get HBO now, to stream HBO now. Because I mean, if you look at if you look at Nielsen, they actually started capturing people who watch TV over broadband, right. people who watch TV over broadband with an antenna as right. well, and then people who just have an antenna with no internet. So that's really makes up that chunk of that 15 million. And there is yeah. like a good five to six million households that just have an antenna. Yeah. So those people are right, not getting HBO now right nope. off the bat. And then, you know, there's only about four million households that have – that definitely have – like they have broadband only and watch TV broadband right. only. So right. they're yeah. definitely using streaming. The group then there's that chunk in the middle that have an antenna and internet. They yeah. might be streaming. They but might, no one really. No knows. one really knows. And their definition of broadband for Nielsen 
is DSL with three MIPS. So a big chunk right. of that is, you know, maybe they don't have the capability to yeah, use it. Yeah, it's not it. really usable right. for it. So, and so they go in and – so that 15 million is actually a lot smaller of a market than it, – it's not really 15 million. It's, no. it's, a, it's, a, it's a smaller market it's more like to draw six from. six or eight. So I started looking at this and I was like, well, you know, what would be a good comparison here for this article? Because she – um, uh, her name, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a Claire Atkinson at the, at the post. She writes yep. this article. I mean, it's not very long. It really just, you know, kind of, it, it just, yeah, kinda, it's, it's like a small little like hit and run piece where she's just yeah. like, man, HBO, man, you stink. You know? <laughs> yeah. And there's, it doesn't really okay. say much. <laughs> and to, to be honest, it, it, like just up front, right? Like it's not poorly written. No, 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 no. It's, like it's, 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 fine. it's a fine. It's just from a journalism perspective, it's like not understanding the statistics and not understanding like the market. Itself. Right. Not at all. It's, it's just pretty much she, she grabs onto the number of there's 15 million homes, only 1 million joined, one out of 15. Oh, I bet you they're really sad that they launched this effort. And actually, HBO responded um, in Fierce Cable like the next day. Um, on so this article written in the post was the fifth, and the next day they came out and they repudiated the report, saying that it's completely inaccurate when it comes to us struggling with HBO now. As a matter of fact, we couldn't be happier. It's yeah. a very good revenue generator. Like the the thing. That, so there were there were two points that kind of caught my eye reading it. One is they say you know like this time last year. They were at eight hundred thousand. So first of all, that means out of the gate, that first six months, they went from zero to eight hundred thousand or something like right, that. Right, because there's right? a lot of excitement, which is over because people wanted HBO was the first sure. premium, and yeah, we should actually level set if anybody's just joining the show for the first time. HBO now is is the streaming service compared to HBO. Go, which is the streaming service if you have a cable or satellite provider. This HBO Now is for people that anyone don't can, have that at all. Anyone can get it and just you know you yep. can download it on iTunes, throw it on your phone, throw it on an iPad, and you subscribe you on, mobily, and that's that. Or you can use Roku. Well, I guess you could use Roku. Yeah, you can yeah. Roku, Apple TV. It's pretty much out. It's out on all the. And actually, she kind of missed that. I think even she, Xbox. That's an, one thing I did want to point out. She did. She, this is she didn't even point out that it's on Roku. She pointed out that it's like Apple TV and it's on mobile. She didn't point out all the devices yeah. it was on. She missed a few. Well, so it was, it was kind of just not – it looked just like a, a quick, I'm going to just whip out this article in an, an hour. She didn't know how angry right. that subreddit would get. Oh, I know. So the the other thing that – so the to finish that thought, the thing that, that surprised me with it is so you're going from zero to 800,000 pretty darn quick, right? Six, ten months, something like that. Then you're going from 800,000 to a million or so. Mm-hmm. Right now, yep. which means, I mean, we're not even through the year. That's a twenty five percent growth rate. Yeah, I think anybody would. It's not to bad that. at all, right? Like, and I'm, I don't know. I mean, HBO isn't putting any money in my pocket. I'm just saying, like, if I were the executives of this thing, I, I would look at it and be like, I think we're setting ourselves up for the future, right? Because this is where channels are going. Yeah, and the way. The way I approached it, because I mean, I'm a bit of a data nerd. I like yeah. like looking at data and trying to make sense of numbers and, and 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 things. And I was like, well, what would be a good way to actually make a real comparison? Right. And the best comparison I could come up with is try to find a way to compare it to HBO. How's HBO do when it comes to cable? Like, what is that? Like, what is What's that year look over like? growth? Well, not even year over growth, but like, what part of the market does it own? And then sure. compare this that's only been out for 20 months to it to see how comparable sure. its market is so when it comes to cord cutters sure. so i i went and i found this it was a, a great art like a great article that really broke down it was actually comparing hbo to netflix sure and not sense. hbo now but hbo like yeah. you know standard hbo and um in 2015 end of year and a lot of this information is from. Have you heard of SNL Kagan? They're a group. They're like a research it's group. Not familiar, but yeah, I'm they, not sure why. Well, it's a um, it's a research firm that does a lot of research for you know cable TV and, sure. and things like that. So they said that in 2015, 30 million households subscribed to HBO. Now, 
you'll see some reports out there that say, you know, 43, 45 million. A lot of that has to do with Cinemax being bundled into there as well. Sure. Yeah. So this estimate is actually just pure it's just HBO, HBO and it's 30 million households. And they are looking, I'm, I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out a, a good way to gauge how many people actually are paying for HBO. Because right. if you, if you're, if you're out there, a lot of times they'll give it to you for free to sign yeah. up for some bundle. HBO is often the incentive channel. It is. And what they do. So what happens is the way HBO st- standard HBO works is pretty much the cable and satellite networks handle all of, you know, the marketing, the billing, all that stuff. And then they just pay a subscriber fee over to HBO to compensate them. And that subscriber fee is $7 and 75 cents per domestic U S domestic sub. So I was looking at that and saying, all right, if I could compare that, because what I wonder what the revenue share is for yeah. HBO now, and that is a hundred percent revenue because it goes right to them. Sans, like if you get on the App Store, Apple's App Store it might gets a little cut. a tiny cut there here. Well, but, and, and the question I'm assuming this is where you're going is like, what is the price point for HBO uh, Go? Well, that just you just get that. That's part and parcel of. I'm sorry, HBO now. Yeah, well, it's 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 pretty much a, the the article I read is like it's pretty much a hundred percent because all that revenue goes to them. No, but what is the price point? Oh, like it's fifteen dollars. So, so okay. I use that as the baseline because right. since that's a hundred percent, and if I can take this you know number here, this seven seventy five sub, yeah. then I can estimate. I can say, all right, well, let's take that number, that seven dollars and seventy five cents. Compare it to the amount of subscribers and then see how that shakes out. Like, you know, and so if you look at it that way, it's HBO standard is 52% of HBO now revenue. And that works out to be, you know, 15.6 million subscribers. So essentially what I'm saying is this is 15.6 is how many subscribers there would be if everyone was actually paying full price right. for regular HBO as opposed to. So 15.6. Now you compare that to the market in pay TV, which is 99.4 million pay TV households. So you're really talking about 15.7%. Right. So HBO has regular HBO has 15.7% of the market based on this revenue estimate. Like in its grasp, that's yeah. where that's where they are. That's their saturation yeah. at this point. I think that's reasonable. And I mean, like the other thing I would think about if I were an executive, right, is that um, now that's regular HBO. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That you know HBO now is basically a two for one for any normal subscriber, right? Like through my regular service, yeah. Right. Like because if it's fifteen dollars for subscription there. And it's seven dollars and seventy five cents as a subscription fee to you know whoever the provider is, then I'm getting a two for one every time I get a now. Yeah, so I would think that they are loving it because they're yeah. seeing a huge revenue boost of each subscriber. Now, now, and also keep in mind is you know the market shares, which I mean I just mentioned they're really only own fifteen point seven percent of of the of the regular market. So to look at the cable, and I I was I mentioned this a bit earlier, but like the cord cutting market, Nielsen does a pretty decent job now. They didn't used to. They used to just kind of ignore streaming, but yeah. I want to say about like you know three years ago they actually started tracking uh, this sort of thing and. It's really impressive how much cord cutting has grown. While you're looking that up, one of the other things I was curious about was like, so we know, you know, roughly the growth rate year over year for HBO Now was about 25%. Right. And I'd just be curious, like, what is, and and we probably don't have this data, but like, what is HBO's traditional services growth rate? Yeah, well, right. it's it's not. I mean, when I when they were doing well, when cable was actually going up, it pretty much paces with cable because a lot of it's just offered sure. when you sign up. But since you know the market it, share of pay TV has been shrinking, so has yeah subscribers because it's been pretty flat, right? And, that, and that's kind of my point, right? Like, so if you got one market 
you're serving with, uh, you know, proportionally double the revenue re- potential, right? And um, growing at 25%, and your other is, you know, relatively flat. I think I'd be dancing a jig if yeah. I was the head of HBO now. Yeah, and that's kind of what it is. People have been cutting the cord now for since 2009, 2000, 2010. Yeah, but it's, right. it was kind of just a, you know, fringe. Yeah. But then, like, 12 and 13 really started to ramp up. Yep. And my 14, people who were cutting the cord. Real numbers. And they're just ignoring it. Like, I saw so many media reports saying, oh, it's just, it's a myth and it's a fad and, or it's it's not really happening. It's overblown. And and, and I'll, I'll just point, because this... Nielsen does this thing called the total audience report and they release it quarterly. Yeah. And, um, the last one that was published was, uh, actually 2016 second quarter numbers. Okay. And it's th- not they, that long. Ago. Yeah. And they do quarter to quarter comparison. So, I mean, if you look at broadcast only yep. now, when they say broadcast only, it's weird because this number actually includes broadcast and they have internet. They sure. could or they may or may not have internet. Right. They actually break that down in, in a cross tab later. A report. Yeah. Right. So from second quarter 2016, I'm sorry, from second quarter 2015 to second quarter 2016, the number of people who broadcast only possibility of internet right. went from 12 million 600 households to 13 million 600 households. So a million. That's a big jump. Huge jump. Broadband only, which are people who just have internet watching, and and this isn't people who just have it. It's people who watch TV and right. have, only have internet, no cable subscription, right. no antenna. Went from three million, tw- uh, actually three point two eight five million, so yeah. three point three million to four point one million. So that's a big deal proportionally. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's another like eight hundred thousand, another almost million yeah. people. Yeah. In a year, almost 2 million people have joined. decided not to go. With right. Cable. 2 million households. Not, not no cable. Not it, having. It. Now, and, and, and if you look at like the cable went, went from actually, this is from Q2 2015 to Q2 2016. Yeah. They went from 100.4 million households to 98.6 yeah. million households. So they fell below the 100 million mark. In the first time in a while, I'm sure. Actually, ever because I think it went above it and then it stayed it's up just there. Stayed there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that's the. So I think we're kind of in this weird spot. Dennis and I are both around, around about forty, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we're Gen Xers, and so as Gen Xers, well, um, yeah, it's so funny. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but like because we're like well, cus- depends when you define exactly it. we're I'm seventy six. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because you were born in 76. But they were like, I'm 76. I'm 76. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to our 76 year olds. I was born in 1976. There. Right, sorry. Because I'm, I'm looking at a, you know, a young man of uh, 39. Yeah, bald and looking like a 76 year old. <laughs> but he's sitting there saying, I'm 76. I'm 76. Back in my day. Struck, sorry, struck me funny. <laughs> but go uh, ahead. But so I was born in 76. And. Normally, and, and everybody defines generations differently, right? Like, right. But normally, I've heard eighty as the cutoff for Generation X. Yeah. See, I heard, and, and that's funny because I've nineteen eighty, I I, not eighty years old. Right. I that's was born in seventy seven. You know, and yeah. I heard that that that's actually the cutoff. Yeah. For X, and I think they're, you know, roughly right. the same. And you know, the way I look at it is when you get into that section. Yeah. It, it's, you have attributes of both. It depends where you grew up, who you knew, uh, what yeah. you were into. And I used to run a modem out of my house. I mean, I grew up because the, yeah. the, the big deal with the the the, the millennials is they kind of grew up with the internet, yes. where X transitioned into it. Yeah, and, now, and that's where I was going to make my point. But finish your thought. Well, yeah, and that's what I was saying. Is like I grew up running a BBS, dialing up at like the age of 10, 11 yeah. on my modem. So. I'm kind of like, a, I guess if you want to use the internet as a gauge, I'm like an exennial, I yeah. guess. And a lot of people are, yeah. you know, so. I'd be somewhere around there. Probably the end of Generation X. Anyways, my point right. in bringing this up is that, like, if I were launching a service and I were caring about how it's doing, 
right, and trying to think about the future. Mm -hmm. I would be looking at where is the future of the market. Exactly. And what is happening is the future of the market is never getting cable to begin with. That's true. And actually these news and reports will show that because they yeah. – not this exact one, but there is one called like the state of uh – yeah. It's like the state of TV. I can't remember. I can't remember the exact name, but they have one that breaks it down on an on a it's a age. big chunk of people. Oh, it's huge. It's like forty percent of like people under the age of twenty five <clears throat> are yeah. not watching television. Like you In know, any we sense watch. that we yeah. There are. I mean, a lot of times they might they might stream it on a Roku or, sure. or or like Apple TV, but a lot of times they're just like firing up their phone or their tablet. And watching it, I mean, again, the, you know, there. So if you if you look at like HBO, and I think HBO is a great service. I got no problem with it. But if you look at it, like it's big heavy hitter, it's Game of Thrones. Yeah, for the most you, part, you could go buy Game of Thrones, all six seasons or whatever, probably for what forty bucks a pop. <sighs> Nah, I'd have, yeah, I'd have to check ish. Maybe 30, 30 40 bucks a pop. Like, well, yeah, if, well, if you get a back season um, of but, any show, yeah, it's about that, about thirty. And bucks. and the point is, like, you know, that's the kind of calculation people are doing, mm -hmm. right? They're going, "Do I ever want to get cable at all when I could just get Game of Thrones? Because that's all I'm ever going to watch on HBO, right?" Right? And, and you know, I like watch. actually. I'm I'm a fan of HBO. No, oh, me too. So I mean, I I actually think that their service is comparable to Netflix. Yeah. When, yeah. When I, you look at their back catalog. They have a very thing, good back catalog. And that's the thing. And, and not to say it's better than, because there's a plenty of Netflix originals I but love. But even if you look at Netflix, there's only a handful of shows where you're like, that show is really awesome. That's original content. Right. right. right? So, I mean, and that's the thing. It's also double, the, almost double the cost of, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, 50% more, 50% more than Netflix. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, when you break it down. So, Yeah. But and, – and, and that's what I'm getting at is people just don't really understand, especially in the media that, who write these articles out of like the blue. They have no understanding of what the market really looks like. Yeah, they're not really trying to understand the market and that's the disservice the article does. It, again, uh, the lady who wrote it did a fine job like – you know, it's actually written well. Mm -hmm. It's just the it's just information – is is presented in a way that leads you to a false conclusion. Right, yeah, and the headline is such a, like... Oh, because people... I mean, how many people, like, we've learned recently, how many people actually read the article, they kind of just see that headline, yeah. and they're like, oh, HBO Now is a disappointment. I mean, must yeah, it's be It's the level terrible. of analysis of analysis that disappoints me, not the level of writing. Right, because here's the thing. I'm a blogger. Right. I'm supposed to be doing that. Right. Not... I'm, I'm the one who's supposed to be writing, like, a quick 300 words yeah. and throwing it away... And, and just pushing it out there. This is a journalist. Yeah, this is someone whose bread and butter is the written word. She should be the one who's looking at Nielsen numbers and putting yeah. together this analysis. Not, not me. I'm a blogger. Right. You know, I mean, it's and that's and that's kind of like it's almost gotten to the point where if you really want to get some deep dive insight, you need to talk or you need to read like an analyst who writes. I mean, it's you're not really getting it like yeah. you used to. Um, from like your your mainstream journalists, it's just not no, happening. and it's it's kind of a well, it's not kind of it's a complete bummer, right? Like, because what you would expect, right? Like, one, I will tell you straight up, I guarantee the New York Post has like a LexisNexis account and like all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. They could have found these publications. They could have looked it up faster than you did. I, yeah, and I don't and have... And found more authoritative stuff, yeah, right? Like, I don't have... I mean, you don't need any special access to get this information yeah. I'm looking at. It's it's available to anybody. Well, and that's what I'm saying is like they could have gone Dude, and deeper, found right. yeah, Hard numbers. more stuff right. that is even more detailed and, and been like, well, here's what's really going on in that market. But that's not what they're... They're going for with this. And I'd be curious, like, if this was in a paper, like, uh, like if we actually, if anyone actually had uh, a New York Post in print. <laughs> um, do they do they still do that? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure just, I'm they do. I feel like such a jerk for saying that, but whatever. Because um, the, only, the only ones I ever see in print are the Washington Post and the New York Times and, well, the Baltimore Sun. Right. And that's that. Yeah. But, it, well, the journal. But... Um, and the McPaper. I mean, USA Today. Sorry. USA Today. 
uh, <laughs> but I would be curious where on the fold like this would show up. Right? I bet you this is buried like deep in in the uh, entertainment section. Yeah, yeah, most most likely. And I mean, and the thing is, it's like I I really I just I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent just to kind of explain like the cord cutting landscape when it comes to the yeah. Nielsen numbers, but. So when you take that into consideration, as I, I mean, I said earlier, you got the forty-one, you know, you got the four point one million um, broadband folks, and then when you take that thirteen point six broadcast uh, number, that breaks down into you got about seven point seven million of those folks have an internet connection as well. Right. So you're really working from like eleven point one as like the upper number and yeah. 4.1 as your like rock bottom number. That's still higher than I thought. I mean, like kind of off of what we were kicking around, I was thinking it was about eight, Yeah, but 11, uh, fine. 11. That's still a, that's 4 million people off of the number. She said, yeah. And I mean, if you want to do the easy math, let's just call it 10. Yeah. You know, 10 million. Just easy math. Right? Yeah. And I mean, I'm, sh- I'm sure it's lower than that because sure. you're, you're talking about a wide group of people out there that only have like three MIPS internet service. Right. So I think 10 is benefit of the doubt when it comes to this market. Yeah. And at 15, you know, it, 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 a million people out of That's 10 million. percent of the total market. 10%. And the, the revenue analysis, HBO, regular HBO, 15.7. Yeah. For HBO that's been out for, you know, since cable Ever. has been around yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And then they who, you know, has every cable company marketing them and handing it out yeah. pretty much for free. Now, they're also they are kind of this doesn't really count in the numbers because, I mean, the direct TV now just came out last mm-hmm. week. They're giving it for five bucks. So I'm pretty sure that HBO now yeah. market will grow. I think that is it's, a big, big deal. Yeah. But then again, they won't be getting that revenue that they're used to seeing from the. From yeah, you mean the fifteen? Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll I actually probably think they're probably taking a, a, a either someone's taking a bath on that. Well, he, here's the way I look at it, and I don't know. You'd have to look at their books, right? But you know, a guess, right? Like the the service, like producing the content and providing the content to something that can render it. Yeah, I have that number already somewhere. There, right? I, you like, know what? Hold on. I have that number, actually. So I guess while you're looking that up, uh, where I was going was, so you've got, like, the cost of, you know, creating the content and licensing content that HBO provides, mm-hmm. right? And then you you look at that, and it's it's not exactly, you know, a complete, like, fixed cost. Right. But, right... Uh, what you end up with, I'm, I'm certain, is like the incremental cost of adding a new user to anything like a subscription based, you know, HBO Go mm-hmm. is very, very low. Oh, yeah. Right. Because it's like talking, every, it's they've a, already paid for it. All. Right. It's sunk cost at that point yeah. for them. I mean, and the numbers, it's actually <clears throat> that they are 4.1 billion in 2015. Right. Billion with a B. Billion dollars. Billion dollars. And it's one – the cost of revenue is $1.6 billion. So that includes everything, you so know. So that's a good – that's a good 60% margin. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Yep. Yeah. I yeah, mean yeah, now – Yep. yep. I, I'm sure there's other costs built into that. Well, I think it's, it's, it's called cost of revenue. So I think that counts – Most of their operating costs? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, so if you take that and you go, okay – now you add like another, you know, <laughs> HBO Go subscriber, right? And they're a two for one deal on revenue, right? Uh, like you're starting to look pretty darn profitable. Yeah, that's. I think they they're digging it. I, I'm, yeah, I would. I, I mean, like, and I get it, right? Like, who wouldn't want a thousand percent, uh, you know, growth rate year over year? But twenty five percent ain't bad. Not right? Like you do pretty well. If that continues compounding, you gobble up market share really, really fast. Right. And and the the whole the whole point of this is I really just wish that you know, there's no really aside from like you, you there's some good people over at tech uh like tech crunch and tech dirt that do some really good sure, you know, cord cutting 
Uh, Mashable, I've seen some decent stuff. Yeah, you sent me a couple of those. But, I mean, when it comes to, like, mainstream coverage of cord cutting, it's like everyone's out at lunch on it. It's kind of funny, because I think it's going to be one of those things where they're going to wake up, and, like, it's like you were saying earlier about, like, the number of subscribers to cable ducking below 100 million for the first time in who knows how long. Like, it's just going to wake up, and that industry's going to have been cannibalized. Yeah. And well, it's happening all over. ESPN, I mean, is losing subscribers left and right. They've lost yeah. – I, I don't have the exact number, but it's in it's like 8 million in the past, yeah. like, five, six years. And then if you look at what's going on at the NFL this year, revenues are down. Viewership is down, like, in the double digits. Yeah. For the NFL – the Which N- that is like the main sacrosanct st- in the United States. It's right? the mainstay of of TV. It's, yeah, it's certainly broadcast television, right? right. Yeah. I mean, that's that. The Super Bowl is the most watched show yeah. every year. Monday Night Football consistently number one every Monday. Sunday Night Football is consistently number one every Sunday, yeah. and it's down all it, the revenue is just it's well, getting people, crushed. And, and that's the thing is every time. Pick, pick the number, whether it's 18 or 22 or 24 years old, right? Every time a person comes up the ranks and ages into the, I've got my own paycheck, I'm I'm buying what I buy, right? right? Like, there is an increased likelihood that that person is not choosing to spend their money on cable. No. Right? And and it's just more and more, and it's really it, out of habit. It's a it's a, it's like a it's a yeah. habit purchase. If you watch YouTube all the time, you watch Netflix all the time, and you, you know, are on your phone or whatever or playing games. Like I get not spending a lot of money on cable. Everybody I talk to, who about cord cutting, they're they, they always want to kind of plan big up front, and I'm like, just do it. Because yeah. that's what I happened to me is we've tried to – we did that too. We would plan. We said, oh, we need to get this and that and that. We just cut it off and it's shocking how little you miss it. Well, and that's the the other thing that I think is, is kind of interesting is that there is so much stuff out there, one, for free, right? Oh, like, yeah. I mean, we, we did a whole episode on like podcasts. Uh, I forget what number it was, but that's a great example of just, like, tons of free entertainment. Yeah. Well, not only that, but, I mean, like, look at, like, Crackle and, yeah. you know, there's tons of streaming services out there with You can with download free stuff. a lot of free audiobooks that are considered, like, public works. Yep. And, right? I mean, there's also, like, there's um, Internet Archive has a bunch of shows, TV shows you can stream, old TV Ted. shows. You can Ted. watch all the TED Talks. You, got, you I mean... We have, I mean, Hulu just just closed up their free service, but for a while you could, uh, you know, just go. Dude, actually, that's dirt cheap. I know, I know, it's still dirt cheap. It's like what seven ninety nine, seven or yeah, yeah. eight bucks. Uh, so I guess the the drag to me, Dennis, about this whole thing is that you've got this article just as an example, because there's like I think we're using this article and we're kind of picking on this this poor journalist. But like, it, Poor, it's a, in more ways than one. Right. I'm, just, I'm just sorry. Oh, yeah. that was a low blow. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> uh, but we're picking on this poor journalist in in the sense that like, it's it's a larger industry theme. And and frankly, you saw the same thing with the big publishing houses when uh, physical books started to transition to digital books. Yeah, everybody's looking for that headline grab. Right. They're, everyone's a contrarian these well, days. Well, and people just kind of waited and waited and didn't really report on oh, well, yeah. what was happening. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, crap, 40% of the industries disappeared. Yeah, like, And that kills a lot of companies. Oh, it was devastating. I mean, it kills a lot of companies, but it also well, it creates a lot of new ones too. More so, I think. I think I don't. I, well, I that's think, the gamble we all make. Yeah, with capitalism, right? Yep. Is that some more gets created out of what creative destruction, right? Like, yeah. So, I mean, I think audiobooks have become like a yeah a, big a deal. huge industry because it's so easy. Like you, it's so easy to like ingest that content. Yeah. Like before, when you're reading a book, like I. I can never read books with my kids up. There's no way it's going to happen. Well, actually, I think... I but think, an audiobook, I can do dishes and listen to the audiobook. And, here's right. here's why what you're saying is a really apt example, right? If what you're comparing, 
if you're a journalist and you're comparing or, or just someone thinking about this, right? Uh, and you're thinking about like audiobooks versus written word books, mm-hmm. right? Books you can smell. Books you can smell. <laughs> All of a sudden, or, or even digital ones, right? All of a sudden, you have a very different concept, like your bar for how successful that industry is, is very different than if you were to look at the market and say, well, what was the market for audiobooks like right. prior to iTunes and or Audible? This shouldn't be that kind, this that different, but it is due to the way well, it's the industry is different. The way the industry structure, yeah, it's because you know you got these cable companies that are kind of like the gatekeeper of that content, where when it's streaming, it's a it's pretty much a deal between you and well Time Warner. But, but the, whoever the provider is. The provider of the content. Right. And there isn't a middleman. There's no middleman. So it's like that revenue goes right to them. <laughs> and yeah. while it should – I mean with HBO, since it's kind of – they were the first ones out there and it's high-demand content, I think they really only took a dollar off their asking price. Yeah, but they in a lot of cases, Right. They can get away with it. In a lot of cases, Clearly. it comes cheaper where yeah. – because – you know, well, they're doing that now with the eighteen or the uh, Direct TV, right? Exactly, they're doing five five dollar, you as know, as opposed to seven dollars and whatever. That's right. effectively built into your cost that's passed on, right, by the cable company. And I guess where I was going is just to go back to the audiobooks thing for a second. If you remember the market, just rewind ten years, mm-hmm. right? If you remember the market of when you bought CDs. That were audiobooks. Yeah. They were insanely expensive. Yeah, it was crazy. And there weren't very many titles. Now they're pretty cheap, and there are an insane number of titles. Yeah, I would say nine out of ten times, if there's a book I want to read, it's on an audiobook. You can can get it on audiobook. Pretty quick, right? Like, And I've gotten pretty obscure because I'm weird, and like I've found some that aren't offered, but but most are. And, And my point is just that, like, if you look at that kind of growth rate, which I think is more to your point with what's happening with, like, the cord-cutting market, right? It's a smaller market than general cable uh, or or it's television a, consumers. Right, yeah. I mean, right? the the streaming market, right like now, pure streaming, it's, just, it's about a tenth of the size. So if you look how much of that it's gobbling up, it's actually a really, really big jump. Oh, well, it's growing so fast. I actually oh, – I did an article on the blog of what, uh, using the Nielsen numbers from like 2012 on, and it's going up at a clip of like 13% per year. So think about that. 13% of the market. Like yeah. that's what it's, – it's just gaining. So that doubles at like a 5%. You know, every five years – that doubles. Yeah, roughly. That yeah. market doubles uh-huh. ish, right? Like five point yeah. two or whatever. No, that's about right. Because right now we're sitting at about seventeen. If you count, you know, now I mean the cord. I the cord never argument. The cord cutter. I think it's all. You know, you can call it what you will. It's basically people that see no they're value being, in cable TV. Yeah, they're being serviced by the same tools. Exactly. So it's kind of moot. Unless you're like the analyst trying to go, what's the driver behind the growth rate? Right. Which to me, <sighs> okay, I guess that's important. That's kind of interesting. But it's interesting, but it really it's, – it's people who see no value in your product versus people that do. Well, and I, <laughs> if you were to say – I mean let's just say for sake of argument, HBO now, uh, market share of, of the revenue capture – of the cord cutting group stayed at 10%. Okay. And so it stopped its growth rate. Right. Right. Like it, it just leveled off 10%, never got any bigger. If the market is growing at 13%, that is still a gigantic moneymaker. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, that would mean that that million, right, doubles every five years. Who doesn't I mean, want that? You know, yeah, I, I and it's gonna tra- I do. It's gonna transition, but it's actually growing on both ends. Is my point right? No, I totally agree. And and while while I don't agree with how like Directv now is packaged or it, well, how AT and T is, kinda, it's likely kinda, to accelerate the rate though. It will, and I'm just and and, and that's kind of where I'm going is cable is dying. Traditional yeah. cable, these Pretty companies quick. are going to have to adapt. 
if they want to survive. Yeah. They're going to have to go to the internet and they're going to have to get rid of that ugly box and start delivering things. their content over. I, I think they can do it, right? Like, I think most of it, like, we said this a lot. If you're rich, you can be a little dumb, right? And and the cable companies are plenty rich. I think they can figure it out. Well, you know what? I mean, I say they're dying, but what could happen is, do, since they do have a stranglehold on ISPs, yeah. They they become utility ISPs. Well, they'll be able to sit there and basically, you know, milk the poor for, for television. A long time. Yeah, it's like or the, mm-hmm. the I say poor, but underserved is really what I mean. So, but that's Comcast or you know whoever they'll be able to serve that that community probably for a long time to come and be fairly profitable in that space. But yeah, I mean, I would expect it to continue to shrink. I mean, partly because that's what I hope for. And then, you know, partly that's just kind of what the data is showing. Yeah. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. It's going up every year. Uh, cable's going down every year because they're dropping like between 1% and 2%, which when you're talking about 100 million, that's a yeah. big number. It's a very big number. Like you're talking about a million to 2 million people dropping cable well, every it, year. That's the other thing is that, you know, a decay rate like that, where you're talking about it, like, dropping and dropping and dropping. Sooner or later, you hit the point where you have to start gutting costs, which is likely going, like, you have to start, you know, removing costs from your your overall fee structure. Right. Which means laying people off or, you know, getting rid of services or whatever, which typically just accelerates the decay rate. Yeah, well, I saw an interesting article on... Um Sports, because yeah. I mean it's it, it's kind of it used to be a dirty secret, but now it's kind of out and known. It's we're all subsidizing yeah. sports watchers because yeah. I think ESPN, the cable company, is it, ESPN makes seven dollars per off subscriber every single off group. every single yeah. subscriber. Yep. So that's just that you also have Fox Sports. Yep, you have. I mean, all those Which regional... makes less money, but it makes... It's a, a considerable amount, yeah. yeah. Then you have, like, all those regional sports networks that make about five bucks per subscriber. Yeah. By the time... I mean, more than half of your cable bill is going to sports stations. Right, because you're either paying for it as a subscriber or you're subsidizing that person who is the subscriber. Right. And the cost of sports has gone insane. Yeah. And now they're kind of painted themselves into a corner because ESPN's like losing subscribers left and right because they can't afford co- co- companies can't afford to pay that. No. No, so they're just dropping them. And ESPN and other oh, not just I don't like me to single them out. It's all the sports sure. networks. Since they're paying so much, since they've already paid so much for that kind of because these contracts that they sign yeah. with these leagues they're are like long, five, ten years, long term, billion, yeah. billions of dollars, they're stuck. Yeah, for a, a considerable amount of time. Yeah, look at NBC taking a bath on the Olympics. They paid all yeah. this money for the Olympics to like for how? I mean, it's a, a yeah. an inordinate amount of time, and they more people stream the Olympics this season than it, than they did watch it. Well, on there's an opportunity cost there too, right? Right. Like, it's not like they can run other stuff. They can't debut other shows. Right. They true. can't put other things in syndication. So it's actually a bigger hole in their pocketbook right. than just that one event. Yes. Right? Yeah, because it's hitting on both ends. It's yeah. like they're not getting what they expected and they I can't to rerun Seinfeld. Cancel all this right. content that normally would be on. Would at make that something. Time. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, so people tune out. And I don't know. I mean, it, it's really hard to, to try and figure it out what's going to happen. But, I mean, the trend looks like at least the, the people that will either opt out, like you said, it really doesn't matter, of ever getting cable or will decide to opt out of using their current cable uh, subscription – it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And you'll see HBO Now's revenues go higher and higher and higher. Yeah. So I really, you know, New York Post, I really don't think that uh, so you're not a fan HBO Now that. is – I don't think HBO Now is anywhere close to a disappointment for no. Time Warner. No. I, and I mean like one – you know, they, they issue their statement and they say, no, we're really happy. 
that's one thing. Take it with a grain of salt, right? Like, what are they going to say? Yeah, because I saw that too. And like, you know what? Of course you're going to say that. You're a company. But, you're going to defend yourself. Like, you look at it and you go, wait a second. It's very profitable compared to your other business. Yeah. Well, right? I mean, I, I did this analysis today in a matter of about an hour and a half. Well, it's like... It, so it's not like it took a long time or anything. The data is yeah. there. And it, I think it kind of proves the point that HBO looks HBO now looks like a pretty good product yeah. and a pretty profitable product. Yeah, that. absolutely. So, I mean, if we could just get away from everyone using the whole now thing, like yeah. DirecTV now, HBO now. Like, I get it. I can get it on my phone. But like, really, that's that's kind of it's kind of a comment on how like legacy this industry is to begin with. Yeah, it's like they can't. Don't they have, like, some jazzy marketing person sitting there coming up with something? Yeah, I think that person came up with now. Oh, it's the same people over at DirecTV that came up with, like, Go Big and oh. you know, Live a Little. Yeah, l- listen to the last episode if you want <laughs> If you want to hear us be, like, marketing people. Why? Uh, Who are the ad wizards that came, came up, up with, with this them? one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, and on that really bad Jerry Seinfeld ep- or, uh, impersonation. Impre- impression. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. It was a bad impression of an impression because isn't that from like a Saturday Night Live I sketch? think it is, yes. yeah. <laughs> so, all right, I'm Dennis Ostaro. And this is Joel Reeves. And we will see you next Monday. Who are all these people? I know, it's like Jerry's in the room, isn't it? You're probably sitting at home going, how did they get Jerry Seinfeld? All right, <laughs> if you guys are enjoying the show, please hit the subscribe button um, in iTunes. That's how iTunes ranks shows, so when you hit subscribe, we go up in the rankings, more visibility, more people listen, and then it'll make sense for Joel and I to just keep making these shows and talking more about cord cutting and uh, new cutting-edge technology in a way everyone can understand and comprehend. If you have questions or comments, please follow us on Twitter. The handle is at Grounded Reason. Uh, you can also send us an email. Uh, the email address is podcast at groundedreason.com. You can take a look on our Facebook page, or you can go to groundedreason.com. I'm always writing articles. There's usually a companion article every week that goes along with the podcast. You can just head on over there and leave a comment, and I will definitely get back to you. Again, thanks for listening, everybody. We really do appreciate it. Um, you know, if you've already subscribed and you're digging the show, please hit us up with a five star review in iTunes. Uh, that'd be awesome. And we will see you next week. <laughs>